Hello back everyone. So now we will be solving a new problem uh, which is uh, 1028 uh, in the book page uh, 544 page 544 in our 14th edition. Now this this uh, I beam or I section can be solved in two different ways. It's asking us to determine the moment of inertia about the x-axis, so about this axis, about this x-axis. Now we can think about it in two different ways as I said. For instance, we divide our uh, section or, or member into three segments. This is the first one here, this is the second segment, and then this is the third one. So the first, the first and the third segments are identical. So we can find it by this way, just summing up uh, the, the moment of inertias for these three uh, sections about the x-axis. This is one. Or, the simpler idea, it's simpler because because of the following look we can actually choose only two segments this is the big segment the first segment assuming that this section or this I section uh, does not have holes so we assume that we have material here and here so if we assume that we'll have this rectangle with the height of 400 right 200 plus 200 and the width of 300 so this is the first one and then we sub so we subtract the hole here we have hole here right and the hole here just add these two holes together to be to make one big hole so this big hole will have the following dimensions it's look it's 200 from here to here minus 20 so to the centroid it's 200 minus the thickness 20 which is now 180 so 180 here and 180 here we just need to touch the face right don't go all the way down, just touching the face. So this is 180 and touching the face or the top face here. Don't go all the way up. Don't don't add these 20. So now we have 180 and 180. So this is this height is 360. Plus now the width now look the width is 300 but you have to subtract the 20. So this is 280. Right? So now the width of the hole is 280. Its height is 360. So take two segments. I'll try to draw them though, but I, I know I'm, I'm really bad at drawing. So, mm? so this is the full section without the holes. This width is 300 from both sides, millimeters, and then the height is 400. assuming it's totally solid and now we take the hole just subtract these 20s and this uh, 7 uh, to 2 millimeters so we get something probably so. I, I, I'm just exaggerating anyways uh, please please try to, to understand the idea it's just too much. Um, it's just too much. Just add a little bit more. Yeah. Maybe something like this. Now this width is. Oh, uh, this is three hundred, but we are sub subtracting the twenty. So this is two hundred and eighty millimeters, and the height we are subtracting twenty from each side. So we are getting um, 360, yeah, 400 minus 40. So this is 360 millimeters. And this is a hole, right? This is a hole from both sides. And this is totally solid. So you find now, the easy point is now the uh, uh, centroid of this shape is actually coinciding with the x-axis, right? Also that of the hole. It's also coinciding, coinciding with the x-axis. So we don't need to use the parallel axis theorem. Immediately, you go there and say that I about the x-axis is equal to the summation of both moments of inertia for both, so for both shapes. I x1, if we call this shape 1, and this shape 2. But 2 is a whole, so we need to subtract that of the whole. So minus I x2 okay so 
because we're looking about if we are looking for the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis so we don't use the parallel axis theorem you go there and immediately you say it's 1 over 12 multiplied by now bh cube b is 300 h cube is 400 cubed this is for the first shape minus 1 over 12 bh cube b is 280 for this shape for the whole right multiplied by h cubed h is 360 and this is cubed your answer immediately would be I hope I'm correct with my calculations 5.11 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 and units very important units always 10 millimeters to the power 4 so this is this is how we can actually solve it simply and directly because we have symmetry right so uh, first these two shapes are exactly the same and then uh, the centroid of the whole shape is coinciding with the x-axis so we can think of a way to use or not to use the parallel axis theorem just immediately use your moment of energy about centroidal axis x so we take the whole shape and we just subtract the whole this is the method this is one method the other more complicated or lengthy method I wouldn't say it's complicated it's easy both of them are easy but the other method is is longer so you take this shape and you find its moment of inertia about this x-axis so you have to use the parallel axis theorem for this shape also for this shape right but for the third shape which is the this I uh, I like beam or section or part or segment whatever now for this part from here to here you can just find it using uh, the the normal theorem which is not the parallel axis theorem just find the moment of inertia about its centroidal axis because for this section its centroid is coinciding or the x-axis is passing through the centroid so you don't need to use the parallel axis theorem for the third section but you have to use it for both the upper and lower sections and parts or parts try this method you will end up I hope I hope you will end up I know for a fact that you will end up with the same result uh, in the next in the next in the next question 28 it's asking us to find the moment of inertia about the y-axis so please try it yourselves okay so if you have any questions please ask thank you very much and see you in the dynamics course bye bye